Welcome to IRG's Health Talk. I'm Tom Hutler along with Shannon O'Kelly, physical therapist and president of IRG Physical and Hand Therapy, and our guest, Dr. Sue Romanek. Dr. Romanek, thanks for joining us. Uh, before we get started, we're going to talk about an interesting topic, which is fibromyalgia, but let's talk about you and your experience and how you found, because you're very passionate about this topic. You're an internal medicine physician. So one, I want to hear about that training, and two, you're also a rheumatologist, so I want to also hear about that. So tell us how you got where you are. You know, thanks for having me here, and you're right. I'm very passionate about helping people, but I'm also a detective. Patients come to me and they want to know why they hurt, why they have a rash, why their back is sore, why the neck is stiff, why other doctors won't see them, why they have an unusual blood test. So just call me a detective. But my main role, I feel, is teaching. I really feel my role is to empower you. I want you to understand what you have. And if anyone else has missed a diagnosis, but then I want to put the control of your health back in your lap. And, and you be, being an internal medicine physician, uh, you're really trained to kind of take it to the next step in investigation. But in addition to the internal medicine training you have, this rheumatology training, which is an interesting discipline itself. And I understand that, you know, there's not a lot of rheumatologists out there because it's a it's an area that... You have to have time with patients, and sometimes in today's medicine and the world we're living in, I mean, it kind of takes the time, uh, physician-patient contact out just because of kind of the compression with, I guess it's the insurance industry. I don't know. What do you think? You know, I really appreciate your comments. A lot of my so-called fascinating diagnoses actually have been met at the bedside. I have a weakness. My weakness is I tend to take too long with patients, and the way healthcare is going nowadays it's getting me into trouble. On the other hand, when patients leave, by then I've hopefully given them the information that will make them feel stronger and put them on a path to wellness. The first patient that fascinated me about this field of rheumatology was one who had got some unusual treatment in Germany. And when I came back, and that was during my internship, and asked the doctors supervising me what happened with this patient, they couldn't give me an answer. Right then and there, at that time, I decided this is cutting-edge medicine. This is a frontier. There's a lot of work that needs to be done. And that's why I did do some additional research in immunology. How does the body protect itself? What happens when the defense system breaks down? Yeah, because uh, the, the, the discipline or the study of uh, rheum- rheumatology, if you will, is... Um very complex, and you described it as your detective because it's it's all these areas of diagnoses where the body's actually almost attacking itself, and we really don't know why that happens. And, and we're finding a lot of stuff out, but tell us what's going on in the field of rheumatology that's exciting right now, and then we'll talk about fibromyalgia. Sure. When I started out, they were giving poisons to kill off something in general, and I'd ask my superiors why, and they couldn't give me an answer. So generally speaking, I tell patients there are different ways we can approach problems in this field. We can use a fly swatter, we can use a cannon, or we can use heat-seeking missiles. Why is that important in this day and age? The fly swatter approach costs maybe a few hundred dollars a year, if that. I want to emphasize, if that. The cannonball approach would cost a little bit more than that, but as well within the means of most Americans. When we're talking heat-seeking missiles, and these are often the medications you see advertised on television, those cost around $15,000 a year. Mm. In many cases, I can say to a patient, you only need the fly swatter approach, but unfortunately in some cases, it becomes clear that that patient may have significant joint damage if we don't intervene. Therefore, we're looking at the heat-seeking missiles. So the bottom line is, I want to tell you your options. Yeah, options. And and the nice thing about the world we're living in today, there is options out there. And there's options for this diagnosis that we call fibromyalgia. And, you know, I've been a physical therapist for 27 years, and I know that looking back 27 years ago and as it progressed, that diagnosis in itself, uh, I'm going to use the term, it was almost like if you had some kind of weird pain symptoms, you were lumped into this fibromyalgia diagnosis. And tell us what fibromyalgia is, and then take us to the next level, and what are you doing to treat it? Uh, it's sometimes called, I guess, 
the yuppie disease, maybe? Isn't that an awful term? Yeah, there you go. There actually was a citation in a very old British medical journal that took me back to the 1800s when I was researching fibromyalgia. At that point, they used the term asthenia, kind of like wasting. And indeed, many patients with this chronic pain syndrome not only have widespread pain, a diffuse pain, often described as being in muscles, but they don't have any energy. They truly have so much fatigue that even to think about exercising is too much. And if they try to exert themselves, they'll pay for it the next day. So something is holding them back. And you might say, well, what can that be? Is, is there a simple magic bullet? And the answer is no, it's very individualized. We know fibromyalgia exists. In fact, in 1990, the American College of Rheumatology identified it as a real diagnosis. So you're absolutely right. Many patients go to their doctor and all they're told with a pat on the back is that it's all in your head. And, and if it's a real diagnosis, then there's got to be real help out there for people. And I know that there's a lot of people that get lost in the system when you have these kind of these gray areas. And fibromyalgia is one of those gray areas. Is there a certain list you described kind of diffuse pain, fatigue? Is there anything else that might uh, be symptomatic of fibromyalgia that you see? Well, a fun question that I ask patients is how do you feel when you wake up in the morning? Often they'll say, like I've been run over by a truck. So I've started calling that the truck sign. Now, if they say that I have a lot of stiffness, that might sound boring to you, but that's now a tip off there may be something else going on. Stiffness in joints, particularly in the morning, swelling in any specific joints, that's not fibromyalgia. So when a patient points all over the body, in general here, muscular pain, then there is probably some element of fibromyalgia, but there'll be other things I'm looking for in the physical exam. But when they talk about swelling or stiffness within activity, all of a sudden those warning lights start flashing in my mind, there may be something else going on. Every patient is an individual, and that's why this diagnosis is frequently missed, because you do not have a checklist that everyone has symptoms matching this checklist for. Very often stress makes things worse. There may be some other conditions masking fibromyalgia or making it look like fibromyalgia. Vitamin D deficiency, a slow thyroid, changes in estrogen hormone levels, underlying hepatitis C, HIV, I have been sent such an interesting set of patients from doctors over the years who do not understand why this patient has so much pain and so much fatigue. And sometimes I have to deal with more difficult diagnoses to deliver. Absolutely you do. I mean, so, I mean, what you are just talking about is really important that the listeners out there understand in, in your practice, being an internal medicine physician and rheumatologist, you're really digging deep and really trying to understand what the patient is experiencing because you're not going to find fibromyalgia with a CAT scan, MRI, or an x-ray, and you can't draw blood to diagnose it. And in today's world, we rely on those diagnostic tests for quick answers, and you're digging and turning over rocks and looking, and, and so you're an excellent resource for these people, I would imagine. And thank you so much for bringing that up. I have patients a few times a month coming to me where some other clinic has done $3,000 worth of tests. And I can have them leave my office the same day with or without a diagnosis of fibromyalgia by simply looking at what they tell me and what I find at the bedside, so to speak. So you do have to spend the time. You do have to be willing to ask questions that might be uncomfortable, such as past trauma, psychological stressors, abuse issues, car accidents, having fought in a war overseas. Not all doctors are willing to go down that path. So you are right. It's looking at the whole picture because the mind and the body are linked. Absolutely. So uh, once you've made this diagnosis of fibromyalgia and you're very confident that's what the patient has, uh, I think the challenge is what are the treatment options? Because you also said earlier, a lot of these people that 
certainly have this uh, diagnosis um, don't want to exercise and they're sore and they're in pain and they're depressed and all those things, why would someone want to be active? What's, what, what are they going to do to kind of turn it around? Great question. You're going to make sure that there are no other conditions that are holding them back. I was talking about vitamin deficiencies, hormonal imbalances, missed chronic infections. You have to be aware of the stressors. So again, looking at the individual patient, you are going to make an individualized plan and you're going to set individualized goals with realistic expectations. So first look for these things you might have missed. And that's where some of these tests come in. You might do x-rays if you're suspecting an arthritis because a lot of patients with arthritis and autoimmune disorders also have fibromyalgia. So when you talk about exercise, we're thinking of things like Tai Chi, warm water aquatics, gentle stretches. But what you don't want to be is a weekend warrior. Those are the patients They'll buy a pair of shoes, run around the track, and they are done the next day. In fact, they feel they, some of them can't even go to work. They have an on-the-job injury, and with fibromyalgia, you are slightly more at risk for not even returning to work. So there's a problem here. The expectations have to meet the level of exercise, and in turn, that has to be appropriate. Yeah, and you know, again, it certainly is one of those areas, medicine, that requires a, a lot of, I guess I'm going to say one-on-one and, and attention and a good guidance and direction. It sounds like you, I mean, and obviously it sounds, and I can see that you're very passionate about that. So how would someone out there, if we have a listener that says, wow, I have that, I, I need some resources, how would they get a hold of you? Well, um, obviously you want someone who has some grounding in Uh, pain and arthritis and hopefully fibromyalgia. My recommendation is the American College of Rheumatology has a list of rheumatologists who are board certified nationally. The local chapters of the Arthritis Foundation are very, very helpful. And I'll repeat that. The Arthritis Foundation, they have a mission to educate the public Definitely look at uh, physicians' websites, but please be cautious because, honestly, the Internet alone is not reliable. And you can have a glitzy clinic, but the providers may not have as comprehensive an approach. And I see a problem out there with patients being turned away from clinics when they announce that they have fibromyalgia. So again, you want to ensure that that clinic is the right clinic for you. And do you have a practice uh, contact number or information? Well, my website is actually my name, suromanicmd.com, or you can call me at 425-462-2531. And I'm in Bellevue, Washington. But I have many colleagues whom I respect who are rheumatologists, more obviously, some more, some less, having an interest in fibromyalgia. So it's a good idea to do your research beforehand, but quite frankly, the chemistry has to be good between you and your provider. So if you're interested in someone, go ahead and interview them. Find out what their philosophy in pain management is. And be cautious, because my personal philosophy is that it has to be individualized. But the bottom line is, you're going to look at how well you're improving perhaps every three months. Don't look for a fast cure. Anyone who offers a fast cure probably doesn't understand fibromyalgia. Good information. And the nice thing to to know is there are resources out there, and you've provided excellent information. And obviously, uh, again, your passion is pretty incredible. So thank you for your time. If you would like more information on this topic, as well as how to contact Dr. Sue Romanek, go to IRGPT.com and click on the 4Health tab, or go to IRG Physical 